Hey guys, want to build a robot? Ever since I started researching the ESP32, I have been dying to make an open source ESP32 powered adventure robot. With so many GPIO pins, 16 PWM channels, tons of other features built in, wireless communication like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, ESP Now, it is the perfect candidate to make an ESP32 powered adventure robot with tons of awesome features. Now, I've been hard at work these last couple weeks developing something that I think you guys are gonna like. We're calling this robot the ESP32 Voyager, and it is jam-packed with features. To control all kinds of servos, we have the XL4015 uh, buck converter circuitry built in right here. To handle the 16 volts going to the DC motors, we have four integrated DRV8871s. We have our external antenna for wireless communication. And we also have breakout pins that head to a breadboard so you can wire up all kinds of awesome sensors. Let's take a closer look at the circuit board. So here we have the circuit board for our ESP32 Voyager. Um, you know, these projects I feel like are never fully uh, done, but at this point I'm really happy with the way this looks. Uh, there may be changes down the road and we'll be sure to update our board pages. Um, but right now I've been super, super impressed with this little guy. Uh, so I just wanted to take a second here to talk about all the features that we built into this board and how you may be able to take it, change it, run with it, use this stuff to do whatever you want. Um, so the first thing I wanna talk about is the actual ESP32. So I'm using the ESP32 with the external antenna and it's a little bit wider than some of the other ESP32 development boards. Uh, and so just keep in mind, um, that's what this pin spacing is for. Uh, so if you're taking this and want to use your own board, you may want to use a different footprint here. Uh, but regardless of that footprint, I wanted to make sure to include these extra uh, header pins right here. So this breaks out each each of the uh, GPIO pins because the ESP32 has so many pins that you can mess with. And so I wanted to make sure this was versatile. Um, that's also why I put a breadboard up front. So this spacing is perfect for those, one of those mini breadboards. Um, so that way you can plug in tons of cool sensors and add in a ton of features. Um, so whenever I was designing this robot, I wanted to make sure it was super fast, super strong, and really, really exciting. You know, there's tons of great small robots out there, and that is a great place to start. But I found that whenever you go to bigger tanked robots, they are one, so, so expensive. And two, it's just, it's just harder to develop your own, you know? And so I took a lot of time and it was really important for me to, um, to make this as affordable as I could. And so that's why I went with using 18650s. You know, a lot of people love using um, LiPos, like standard RC LiPos, and you, you could if you wanted to, um, but just with the cost of 18650s having gone down so much, uh, the fact that if one cell does get damaged, you can swap one out. Um, also, if you wanna get, you know, genuine LG or Samsung cells, you can totally put those in. And so it's a great way to have a rechargeable, super quick robot. And so with those four cells, we're dealing with about 16 volts. Know, depending on how fully charged uh, your batteries are. And so that means that we have a ton of power. And now while these DC motors are meant for 12 volts, really it's not a big deal. And so with that 16 volts going into our motor drivers, we have a ton of speed, a ton of power, and that makes for a really, really fun robot. Now, the ESP32, as well as our servos, cannot handle 16 volts, right? That goes without saying. And so I wanted to include some buck converter circuitry. Now, you can get the XL4015 buck converter circuitry um, in its own board, and that's actually the first version I had, um, but I really wanted to ensure the highest quality that I could, and so I decided to, to uh, design in the buck converter circuitry. And so this right here is the XL4015, um, and I have been so, so impressed with it. According to the data sheet, um, it can push five volts at five amp. Um, and so rather than include a potentiometer, I actually use the resistor values to set this at exactly five volts. So normally you can change the voltage with a little um, potentiometer, but I wanted to keep this at five volts since we're only gonna use it for servos um, and to power this guy. And so I just, I just thought that was easier there. So this guy is set up to uh, five volts, but if you wanted to, you could swap out one of these resistors for a different value to get a different voltage if you really wanted to. Um, okay, so also we have our breakout pins. So these are for four servos. Now, if you wanted to add in an extra servo, you could do it with the GPIO pins. Um, but I have four servos here because that's what I use for my robotic arm. Um, one thing that's really cool is uh, if you have, say so you're just doing like a pan and tilt, 
You could only use two if you wanted to. Um, and then you could plug an FPV cam uh, into this right here since that FPV camera only needs five volts as well. Um, I also have this five volt and uh, ground pin broken out right here. Also to hook up anything you want. So if you have like a relay, um, I actually use this port for the FPV camera too. Um, now I know a lot of you guys may be wondering why I didn't just use the ESP32 cam board. Um, and th there are a couple reasons. One, um, with the delay with the Wi-Fi camera. Also, yeah, you know, you don't have as many pins. I actually really love using FPV cameras because you can still record it. You can still travel over long distances with it. Uh, the delay is pretty minimal and it's really, really fun. Uh, so it's just a fun, affordable way to add a camera to your project. And so I usually have those pins broken out. So we have our servo pins, we have our buck converter circuitry. Um, this power switch right here is what turns off the battery connection to the whole system. And so having this big, powerful uh, power switch right here is really important too. Um, okay, so the last thing I wanna talk about here are the motor drivers. So I am a huge, huge fan of the DRV8871. It is, oh, in my opinion, just the best higher voltage motor driver I see out there. Um, so if you're using less than nine volts, you can't use the DRV8871. Um, but what's crazy is I think it can go up to like 30, 35 volts or something. I'm not exactly sure. And obviously we're not going that high, but the 16 volts that we're running into these guys is Perfect. So you can see it's a pretty teeny tiny little IC chip, but it's got a ton of power. And so all you need are two capacitors and a resistor. Um, and this guy is good to go. So in terms of controlling this, um, it's really, really awesome. You can even do things like hard stop. You can do a slow stop. Um, you have excellent PWM control. Um, you do need P2 PWM pins per, uh, per uh, motor driver, but with the ESP32, we have so many pins that it's, it's not really a big deal. And so I actually have four of them on this board right here to control the individual motors. Now, um, these guys can pull up to 3.6 amp and still survive. I think that's peak, um, peak amperage. But the, uh, the 25 mil motors that we're using, especially at the 16 volt that we're running through, um, even the stall current on those motors is not enough to fry these things. And so they're really, really, really strong. Um, so this is the circuit board itself. Um, I also, oh yeah, I have the whole pattern right here. This is for a standard um, aluminum servo bracket. You know, you see those servo brackets all the time. And so I wanted to include that whole pattern right there. Um, now this small hole right here, that's actually for the antenna. So it's the antenna can go down inside and then come back out and screw right here. Um, having that external antenna was also really important so we can get some long range. Um, I've tested this with the PS3 controllers, also with ESP now, and the range is really impressive. And that's what's cool too about using the uh, FPV cam is that your uh, camera has a pretty long range, you know, three, four, 500 feet, and the ESP32 has that same range. And so it makes for a really fun robot. Um, now these whole pattern right here, that's for the tank chassis that I use. Um, I spent actually months trying to find the best tank chassis I could. The one that was uh, feature rich, it was well built um, and um, also fun, you know, one that could stand up. So um, I have put these, this chassis through the paces, man, uh, going through some deep sand and asphalt and all kinds of crazy stuff and it is a champ. And so this whole pattern is uh, used for two of those chassis put together to make the larger robot. Um, at this point too, I wanted to talk about the uh, ESP32 Explorer. Now this is actually the exact same robot. The only difference is I only have two DRV8871s and the whole pattern is for one of the chassis. Um, and so that is fully possible. I'm gonna post both these board files and I have the, uh, the chassis up on the site. So if you're building the uh, larger ESP32, you can pick up two of the chassis. Um, but if you're building the smaller ESP32 Explorer, um, the Voyager and the Explorer, you only need one of those chassis. Um, and this has been a really fun platform. I just found that um, one, it's fun to make one that's bigger and crazier. And two, this one's a little narrow. You know, um, it's still an awesome little robot. It even has the same hole patterns and uh, the same breakout pins for breadboards and um, a lot of the same features, same power switch too. Um, it's just a smaller version. And so um, it was really important to me too to have uh, two versions out there. So that is the board itself. Let's go ahead and solder one up.
right, now that we have our board soldered up, the board attached to our chassis, all we need to do is add some batteries, plug in the ESP32, write some code, and get exploring. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you get the chance to make one of your own uh, ESP32 Explorers or Voyagers and have a ton of fun. Um, as always, we have these bots available as kits on our website. Uh, we also have all the information uh, that you need to build one of your own on our website. Um, I'm actually planning on having a more in-depth uh, programming tutorial as well as a, a build tutorial down the road. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.